everyone and welcome to it's all good all right here on rebellious ufology i'm lynn wallington and i'm here with my co-host jim goodall how are you jim i'm just fine i have a voice today i didn't have one last week um <laughs> and i'm you know i after i left the uh, ufo gathering that from you know, dave scott had put together there in vegas and then we had john lear's memorial service on april 24th yeah. I headed up, uh, actually spent two days with, uh, I just call him Typhoid Mary. And that's uh, Sonny <laughs> at, at <laughs> Paranormal Chop Shop because I'm on my way back and I called him up and, and, I, and I said, uh, I, I'm going to stop on by. I said, well, I just uh, uh, tested positive for COVID and he was feeling just pretty bad. So mm. I drove from Beale Air Force Base straight home, 15 hours, 1,046, uh, yeah, 1,046 1, miles home in 15 hours. And I, at my age, I can't do that anymore. I used to be able to do it with a heartbeat and still be able to go out and, and party after that. And I just, yeah. it proved to me that, no, you're not as young as you think you might be. <laughs> You're an old fart. I couldn't do it at this point. I wouldn't do it. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So the fact that you did it alone, I just be like, yeah, that's just well, not. Well, I've done it on a. I did it. I did it. I've done it on a motorcycle where I've, oh where I've ridden for for fifteen hours straight. No thanks. And no way. <laughs> I, I, I less. I had left uh, Reno at nine a.m. It's a hundred degrees. I'm in my full leathers. The warmest it was was one hundred and twenty. That was near Mercury. Mm. Every hundred miles, I'd get two two liter bottles of water and gas. And the next hundred miles, the body the water is empty. Get two more uh, two, two liter bottles down it. I didn't go to the bathroom the entire time. I had perspired. Oh you know, it was about fifteen. It seems like about fifteen gallons of sweat. Oh but when God. I got but, but when I got home, I felt great. I called. I called. I called my wife up and I said, "Hey, I'm. Uh, I, I'm going to make it all the way home." She was, you know, she was just dumbfounded. I said, uh, "I'm going to call you when I get ready to turn off I-10. Turn the hot tub on." Because and I came in. I just stripped down as I'm walking through the house, <laughs> and just got sat in the t uh, hot tub and just went ah, and that, <laughs> and I felt great the next morning. Uh, that but I've also weird. had the same the same thing where I didn't drink as much water and I didn't hit, you know didn't hit the hot tub and I was wiped out for two or three days. Uh, this one was yeah. one of those two or three four day uh, events. Wow. So, but it was That's fun. I, I had a, a a decent turnout. It could have been bit better, but I was I gave a presentation to the intelligence squadron there at Beale on the history mm -hmm. and development of blackbirds, and it was just it was fun. I hadn't I hadn't been to Beale in about fifteen years. And from there, I was going to go up and see Lazar, hmm. but it's snowing between you know where I'm. I was going to and where he's at, and my car is not a car you drive in the snow. It's not even a car you drive in on damp roads in the mountains. <laughs> right. Yeah. 
because it's just too slippery. So what Corvette's not an all-terrain vehicle? I can't imagine that. No, no. I mean, I uh, <laughs> I, I went up to Kit Peak with uh, Stu Brown from Popular Science uh, here a number of years ago in, in the vet, and they'd had snow, and I'm I'm coming down, and I'm just uh, no, I was yeah, I was coming down the mountain, and I'm I'm going around shaded corners doing about one mile an hour and as my my car is sliding I know as mm -hmm. as I go around, as I go around the bend I'm gonna hit sunshine the ground's gonna be you know dry and I'm gonna stop so I wasn't too white knuckled yeah. but it's it's not a car you want to drive in snow and ice period so yeah. but it'll do 100 it'll do 185 if I push it but I, oh. I'm not. De I'm not designed for 185, so I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna hit that speed. Not in that car. <laughs> so well, we have a fun show tonight, Jim. I'm yes, so excited. we do. We've got yeah. the guys, Ben and Joe from UFO Garage. I think we should just yes. go ahead and bring them on. What do you think? Absolutely, absolutely. The yes. you know the Wayne's World of the UFO community. The, the UFO Garage guys. There party, he is. Party hey, on, man. Party, yeah. party, hey. party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? On. How are you all today? Doing yeah, great. Doing guys? great. We're doing we're pretty good. good. Pretty good. Yeah. Good, good. Oh, my gosh. You guys are always so smiley. I love it. I don't think I've ever seen you, like, angry. I want to. I really want that. And there's something it's, wrong it's, with it's, me. Because I just it's want a, Ben and Joe really angry. I try to reserve my 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 uh my smiling for my two to three hour window at night when I have to hop on shows, you know. I get that. I <laughs> yeah. get that. Then the rest of the night I'm like this. Well, <laughs> yeah. I only get angry when I miss a meal and then I, yeah, I also get uh, that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Not all it's grouchy. Funny. Oh, it's funny yeah. though. I, I, I totally get what you're saying. And I actually am quite like that because people <laughs> would probably think I just never shut up in my life, but I actually am almost pretty quiet. Like most of the time, except when I'm on air, it's just like, get all my talking out here. And then the rest of the day, I'm pretty quiet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't go do, do a lot during the day. Um, I, I'll go sit out by the pool or I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, maybe go, maybe go somewhere, but I, there's a lot of times I don't say, I don't, I don't talk to another human being other than my wife and she's a human being. I mean, but she's, uh, <laughs> uh, but we, we, we have ca casual, casual conversations, but when I, when I get on, when I get on the air with somebody, if I, you know, if I, yeah, if we hadn't talked in a while, my God, I, just, I, just, I never seem to run out of words. They just keep coming out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's so gift, hey I, I i got i got a i got a bone to pick with joe and ben oh, i've exactly. never got i've never gotten a t-shirt i know you, you we mentioned that in, in vegas uh that's my fault uh i uh i'm about to send you like 20 of them i just need your address <laughs> ben, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 so, but you wanted to you wanted to commit suicide when you were in vegas didn't you oh that was just food poisoning never mind <laughs> i <laughs> heard about that ben. i oh bet he God. did want to though yeah Def, yeah i haven't had food po well i've only had food poisoning twice that was the second time and uh if it weren't for for being sick already like wanting to you know to, hey just you know I'm fine with just ending it. Just uh, get get away with, from yeah. all this pain. But also, I was wheeled out in the middle of the casino, like from the freight elevator to the exit. Oh my! And God. there was like 50 people, like, oh dang, like taking photos and videos, oh. and flashing. Oh my god! People followed us out into the street, and we're like, "You suck!" It was terrible. It's what? like it's like everybody <laughs> thought that like Ben OD'd on some heroin up in the room. It really he just yeah. had the poops real bad. Yeah, but, it was, but it was just a bad taco, huh? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my god. Well, that's memorable. Yeah. That is memorable. That's <laughs> yeah. You look at these such so, jerks. Honestly. We, I mean, when yeah. I when I saw when I saw Joe uh early later on in the day or something like that, or maybe it was in the morning, that you hadn't had any sleep. So what why why you look so terrible? And I said, Well, I was been, you know, in the hospital with Ben uh until five o'clock in the morning and mm -hmm. Dude came rolling just, in like three hours later. They just kicked him out of the hospital. Yeah, they kicked they kicked me out. I show up at the 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 hotel room and Joe had just gone to bed. And then oh. like 
I'm waiting for him to, to you know get up and open the door, and I just lay down on the floor. So when Joe looks outside to find me, I'm I'm not there. So he goes back to bed. <laughs> oh well. Oh, like, well. Hey, dude, I'm still here. And, yeah, and my name my name wasn't on the room. So when they yeah. wheeled Ben out, they closed the door, and then they were like, "Well, you, I mean, you can't go. You don't even have shoes on or socks." And I was like, "Yeah, I know." And then uh, I turned around to get back in the room, and the room was closed. And it took me like another two hours to get back in the room. Because I had to like call Ben's wife, who's like two hours away. So at this time, it's already like two in the morning where she's at. Oh, oh so geez. <laughs> oh, no. you, you know how to have a good time. You guys know how to have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> we try, man. We try. But yeah. yeah, all in all, good stuff. You know? Yeah. 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 No, I, <laughs> I, I, did, I did go to uh, John Lear's memorial service on, on that Sunday. Yeah, how was that? Yeah, that was that was good. Uh, the only the only person I was disappointed that didn't show up, and he probably had other obligations, and that was George Knapp. Yeah, because he and you know he and uh, he and he, you know, he and John Lear went you know go back forty some odd years, and that's how I met George is through uh, John Lear. Yeah, in fact, I'm probably here right now because of John Lear. If I, you know, if I hadn't, if I hadn't been introduced to him, if I hadn't been, uh, uh, you know, become close friends of his, I mean, for almost 50 years, I, you know, I wouldn't have met a Lazar. I, you know, I probably wouldn't have met George Knapp. I sure wouldn't have gotten involved in Area 51 or in uh, uh, Tonopah Test Range or the Little Alien. And it just goes on and on and on. And, and the catalyst to all that was, uh, was John Lear. And he was, he was, you know, I was blessed to have known a side of him that a lot of people don't, don't see because we go out and spend time out in the desert and half the time we're laughing. I mean, he's a, he and a half. I mean, no one, no one could pull up, pull off a being pissed off, be, you know, beyond, you know, any reason. I mean, foaming at the mouth, shaking, he's so mad at you. And then all of a sudden, you see this twinkle in his eye, and said, "You son of a bitch, leered." He lit out the, the best laugh. He just he loved pulling pranks on people, but there wasn't anything he couldn't fly. I mean, he was type rated, and I think I think he told me once it was fifty eight different aircraft types, including helicopters, both multi engine, uh, mm -hmm. prop, turboprop, uh, jets, and uh, helicopters. And it's just, uh, and I think even hot air balloons. I think he had a hot air balloon license as well. And there wasn't anything related to aviation that he didn't have. That's awesome. Yeah. Plus, he was, you know, he was he flew for Continental Air Service for fourteen years. Who was that? That's the, that's the CIA it? airline. That's that's the subsidiary of Air America. Ooh. That's and he did that. He did that. Name, like Lear. I think it's a prerequisite. He has to fly. He right, right, it. absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, do you even have to put in a like a uh, like an application at that point, or send in a resume? You're just, just like, hey, I'm a pilot. A, it's just I'm like a... out he comes. He learns to to fly before he learns to drive. He has I mean, a he, was a, he, he was a certified he was a certified he was a certified A and P. He was a you know, certified flight instructor on all types of of craft. I mean, he flew everything from a, a, a small little home built. To an L ten eleven, you know, he, he flew the seven forty seven for Connie Coletta, you know, Coletta Airlines, and he was just he was a one. They, they only made one of them, and then they destroyed the mold because they know that the world could not deal with more than one John Lear, <laughs> and they're and they were right. I mean, they destroyed just, the mold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. So who's I had a, we, go on. Who, who is it that said uh, this guy's crazy because he believes in, in in aliens? Which was it, John Lear? Or was it? Uh, yeah. Was it? Uh, Everybody he, thought John Lear was crazy because he believed in UFOs. Yeah. And and the closer we get to disclosure, and I think it's I think it's I think it's coming soon. I can't, I have nothing to back that up with, but I believe I honestly believe that we're you know we're going to be in for uh, a hell of a surprise. Oh yeah, and um, mm. and I think it's going to be soon. I mean, there, there's there are some rumblings, you know, in and you know, in and around the community that say that it's going to happen. It could happen this year. It could happen before the end of the year. And 
I don't know how I don't know how it's going to be presented because you know you know you know that the government uh, is going to do something to screw it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. They would never, never. Oh no! Yeah. They're and, very and, capable. Yeah. Yeah, and then you and then you're going to have the dis, disinformation people out there say, "Oh, that's got to be swamp gas," or "No, it was a it was a, a weather balloon or some other crap that goes along with it." And, what, yeah. what if we what if what if we find out like half the people arguing about this stuff on the internet are actually like CIA plants and like no one actually is like that up in arms about it? <laughs> like, yeah. I would not be surprised at all. That's what I would. That was what like, would happen with Lynn. What, you not know, I, 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 you know, I, uh, when I was at CIA taking pictures of my Blackbird, I had a chance to go to their gifts, you know, their gift shop, and I do have an official CIA T-shirt. Oh, that's sick. And I have an official bought it. It's purchased at the CIA, CIA a polo shirt with a very, very nice CIA logo on it. So maybe I'm the that's plant. Cool. Maybe I'm the I'm the person who I'm not don't, who I say. Don't I am. say that. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> that. People are gonna be accusing you of that forever now. Oh, I know. I don't care. I've been <laughs> accused of so damn many things. It doesn't it doesn't bother me at all. I mean <laughs> that's all right. I've been I, called a shill already, so it's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. And uh even when someone yells asshole, I always respond to because that's, uh, you know, <laughs> to, to term of endearment as far as I'm concerned. You say thank you. Like, oh, thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just yeah. reaction. Reaction yeah. response. Oh, you're talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if, if you're trying to at Jim, he said, what? What? <laughs> if, if you're trying to hurt my feelings, you're not doing a very good job of it. And, uh, <laughs> That's hilarious. That's so, awesome. I kind of hope, yeah. you know, that uh, that if they do come out with it, you know, because, I mean, you're, you're right, Jim, they, they probably will mess it up. I mean, they can barely deliver the mail correctly. So, you know, it's like I, I kind of hope that they come out and they be like, hey, you guys are right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys. Are, hey, you guys are right. Right. That's all I want from yeah. them. That's it. Yeah. Like that, it could be that just that simple. Like, because when you think about the topic, like what's funny, right? Is that like the government is really worried about like the technology implications, the way that society is going to react. And like, there's all these like really intricate details when really, I, I think most people just want to know, Hey, is there we aliens or shit. not? We don't <laughs> you know care. I mean, <laughs> Oh, spaceship? it's an alien. We want to know two I things. Are there spaceships and are there aliens? If the answer is yes, that's all we need. You can figure the rest yeah. of this stuff out yeah. on your own. Uh, and, we'll, and, we'll and, and, and then you then you have the uh, the uh, conspiracy theorists that say, well, they're ninety nine percent of them are man made. Okay, okay, I can live with that. But what about the one that isn't? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah, what, gonna, yeah. What about the one that that Dave Fruhoff chased in an SR seventy one and left him in the dust? I mean, that's that, this is nineteen seventy two. This is you know, this is before uh, Lazar went to work at S four. Yeah, uh, not, not a lot of things out running in SR seventy one, right? No, not not in that time frame at least. Maybe yeah. today, yes, but back in seventy two, seventy three. Bite your tongue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I have this theory. There. I have this theory that the government is purposefully inept. That's that's how they're going oh. about this. I think that their I, ineptness I, is on purpose. So we think that's stupid. I've had go. I've had go arounds with people in, in the security you know, segments of our military. And Pete Ames told me once he was deputy director for program security for special projects. He worked for a, a colonel named Barry Hennessy and. Uh, we went round and round when my F-117 book came out because um, I was at the Pentagon and I went to get my permanent Pentagon pass and I had a flag on my security clearance. Now I had above top secret clearance. I had to have the same clearance as my boss, who was a two-star general. I was a wing historian. And you know, Pete says, you're giving these guys too much credit. He said, you know, you typically, if, if you're a federal bureaucrat, you're lazy and you're going to take the easy way out. So, you know, when they, when they say, well, we're going to we're going to turn this over to you know our investigative guys and they're going to do this and do that. No, bullshit. It's not going to happen. Uh, they're going to screw it up somehow. And he said, don't, don't give them more credit than they're worth. You're deal You're dealing with, again, bureaucrats. And if they can find a way to get out of doing something, they would just assume 
spend all day making making it look like they're working when they're not doing anything. And and if they used half the energy to avoid work to get the job done, uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't be in the you know the the mess we're in today. Sounds like I should have worked for the government. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd be perfect. You'd be awesome. perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I have so, to? Is I it check really my, that important? I gotta check yeah. my nap, my napping schedule. We've yeah. got a, we got See a if I can squeeze that to in. figure out today. <laughs> yeah, uh, and and then I'll look into it. You, you know, said that was national security. Time. I'm gonna pin that on my clipboard. I'll pin yeah. that up. National security <laughs> issue, yeah. and I'll get to that on Tuesday. I think I'm open. Wait, no, tequilas and tacos. It's Taco Tuesday. What was I saying? <laughs> it's gotta be a Wednesday. Yeah, the yeah. Wednesday. I'm probably gonna be a little hungover, so maybe isn't, Thursday. Isn't that isn't that Prince Spaghetti Day Wednesday, or is that Tuesday or Thursday? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. yeah. And and to the world out there, we're having a serious discussion on you know, which you know, the, I, you know, e events and to topics that are earth shattering. So I just mm -hmm. want to make sure everybody's everybody's taking notes because you will be tested a little bit later. All right. Which so, day is spaghetti? Which is yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Earth shattering. So, there there oh, was an oh, earth shattering oh, question for, for you, Jim. Who who has who has uh, who has something new? Uh, would I trade my Corvette for a real UFO? Uh, only if I can go across the universe in a blink of an eye. Um, the answer would be yes, I would. And, Come pick us up, dude. Come pick us up. Yeah, I would. I'll pick, pick, us, pick us all up. I'll zip around the world two or three times. And uh, maybe uh, maybe I go and you know, appear you know, you know, in uh, Putin's room and just give him a good bitch slap. And then, you know. And, <laughs> <laughs> then you know, have Scotty have Scotty beam me away again, so there's no retaliation. <laughs> I don't, I, 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 <laughs> Wait a second, let me, let me hold on. Beam me back. I gotta go poop outside of his doorway. So when he wakes up and walks out, he steps in it. Take that. I think I think Jim hey. maybe maybe Lockheed and Corvette should uh, get together and make a little, something a little special for you. You know, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, think so. I think I think so too. With I a Corvette so emblem too. on it. Heck yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and if we get our if we get our hovering Impala, then Jim and I, Jim and Ben and I, will be the only ones with uh, uh, you know, hovering uh, Chevy products, which would be oh, sweet. This is, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 I'll, I'll, so, I'll, I'll, so, so what, what's on, what's on the radar with with uh, with you two, Joe and Ben? What's uh, well, what, as far as like earth shattering. Like, like stuff where okay, so there's there's this one thing that I've been kind of paying it a little more attention to uh, lately is this this buried earth theory. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of that, but uh, it kind of it kind of relates to Tartaria, uh, which is like this. I think it's loosely based off of um, drugs. Uh, uh, what, <laughs> <laughs> what is it related to drugs? In the end? <laughs> Uh, but like, yeah, like it, talk, it talks about, um, uh, all the, these buildings, these old structures and, uh, photos of, of the world fair and how a, a lot of these buildings were basically, uh, architectural, uh, marvels that a, a lot of the technology that was used to build those buildings is, is either gone or, or missed, misplaced. And, and some of these buildings have been, uh, buried and, uh, I, I, I kind of made this connection in my head. It might not be connected at all, but th there's this, this interview with Lou Elizondo where he's saying like, Hey, what if we find out that it's not really about aliens? Maybe it's just a, just a piece of the puzzle that, you know, that, that that's just the tip of the iceberg and the rest of it is more about our history as humans. And what does it mean to be human? So I'm kind of like digging in and trying to see if I could find any yarn connections there with well, and, and there's 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 some speculation that some of the crafts were craft that are being seen you know tr3b's and you know some of the other uh, events that have you know happened recently it may be time travelers it may be us in the future coming back just to see so these guys really screwed it up in 2020 21 22 I hope there's I hope there's an end game to that, you know, to the to the 20s. I mean, because I know when 2020 was going to arrive, oh, what a cool thing. You know, you're going to be everything is just 2020. In other words, it's screwed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 20, 2020 used to be, uh, you know, I have 2020 vision. Well, good for you. Is, now so it's just a bad omen. It I wonder, is. 
I wonder if every every uh every millennium like sucks at the beginning, like you know, like <laughs> in, in the year three thousand, <laughs> things are gonna suck for like forty years. Like in the year one thousand, everything just sucked for like the first forty years. Like that would be yeah. terrible. And now it's two thousand. <laughs> like we like have to figure out a new millennium like every time. We're really doing <laughs> not that good of a job. <laughs> well, and 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 I don't I don't know where in the hell the last thirty years went because in in my head. Uh, there's a lot of things, but in my head, I'm I'm still in the '90s, in the early '90s, and I don't. And I, for some reason, I haven't tra- I haven't moved out of that mindset. I feel the exact same way, Jim. Yeah. Like I really you am. Like, like five my, in the '90s, Joe. I, well, I mean, I was born in '87, but the '90s were the greatest years of my life. Are you kidding me? Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. So many good things. Yeah, TV was, dinners, skateboards. Rollerblades. I rollerbladed in my house. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I tried a skateboard once of downtown Anchorage, 1965, and I ruined a pair of forty dollars slacks, and I was pissed. <laughs> That's the only time I've been on a skateboard. Well, yeah, some. I was. Yeah, I, I've been. I, I, I have. I have been drink, drinking heavily that evening, and someone said, "Hey, so I, got, I got a new toy." So it's a Picked it up when I was down in California. What is it? <laughs> it's called a skateboard. So what do you do on it? You step on it and you fall on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you I remember how much they cost. Like, I love that so much. That's so specific. Them, so it's going to be. Oh, yeah, man. $40 uh, slacks. Oh, my God. I'm never trying to skateboard ever again. I, uh, I, I've i ruined a pair of slacks on a bike. I remember the first time I did it, it was picture day at school. My mom dressed me up all nice. I rode my bike. And that was the first time that I learned about that trick that you're supposed to roll up that one pant leg uh, <laughs> or else it gets caught in a chain. And uh, yeah, because, you know, when I was a kid, I mean, I didn't care. I was always in shorts anyway. It's like, I never, I, you know, even my pants, it didn't matter. For some reason, when I was a kid, my pants never got caught in the chain. But as I got older... They got caught in the chain quite a bit. And I ripped those khakis. She was not happy. I think they also yeah. cost around $40 at the time. <laughs> and, and, like, and like like Big Willie said, back in 1965, 40 bucks was the equivalent of $500, pair of, $500 right. pair of slacks today. Oh, my God. That's at, at least. That's true. That's that's that. So that's and, why you uh, remembered how much they cost. That's right. That's yeah, right. Now I get it. So the good old days, yeah, when – you can fall down and get up, and no one laughs. I mean, no one cries, and everyone running over to you. Someone said, "You know how how you can tell if, if someone falls down if they're young, if they're old. If everybody laughs, you're young. If everybody goes, oh my god, and they start running towards you, you know, well, you're an old fart." Oh my god! And when when I was when I was, when I was at when I was at the uh, disclosure con up in uh, uh, Pine Top with uh, Doc Skinner, and I'm giving the presentation. And I step off the back of the stage. I oh, disappear. No. I don't even oh, remember God. falling. And I fell about I fell about three feet. And, and I, I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the floor. And I said, what the hell am I doing on the floor? <laughs> I get up and walked around. And I mean, everybody's running towards me. And and I didn't even I didn't even twist anything when I fell. I don't know how in the hell I did that, but Dude, I didn't. It would have been awesome if you had like a smoke bomb in your pocket and you just ripped that thing off and you <laughs> pretended it was a magic. What? It was a magic trick. Well, after after I got back on the stage, I I came very very close to saying, "Now that I have your attention." <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can just imagine like Jim falling off the stage and he gets knocked out. And then all of a sudden the smoke bomb just goes off while he's laying on the ground. <laughs> Waste on him. Oh no. He, he got, he got, you know, he got hit with a phaser or a taser or whatever. Yeah. Oh my and, then, God. and then you like roll away and then you like appear uh, like on the other side of the room, but you're still on the floor and you're like, Hey, I'm over here now. Why, I, I, I must I must have very very strong bones because I let's say I didn't break anything, yeah, and amazing. I and I very easily could have. I mean, I was when I was with the Museum of Flight, I was on we we're moving an an F four U Corsair, we we're moving it to the main gallery there at uh, Boeing Field, and I'm taking pictures of everything, and I'm standing on top of the tow tug, which is yellow, and someone had put a a yellow raincoat just on top. They just took it off. It was in the way. And I stepped on it and I, and I fall. And I'm, you know, I am, my feet are three and a half feet off the ground. And I go and I have my camera in one hand. I landed straight arm 
onto the ground. Ooh, shit. I didn't break anything. Oh my god! I must be Superman in disguise, and I don't even know it. Yeah, I mean, because I should, I should have shattered, I should have shattered my wrist because I mean, at the time I was at you know like two seventy. I'm two ten now. That's crazy. Uh, Man, and, I'm the opposite. I step wrong. Like last week, I was like, I hear a crack, and I'm like, well, that's broken. <laughs> so, like a month ago, on outside, I was taking the dog. I was like six in the morning. I had kind of the same thing happen. It was icy, and I didn't know it. The dog went down just fine. I didn't think anything of it. Slip did like a cartoon kind of like, whoop, you know, slip. <laughs> and at the bottom, I look at my finger, and it was like huge i was like well that's broken oh, <laughs> yeah. complete Dang. opposite break that's everything crazy. Yeah. Yeah. that's that, that's because so, i feel like you know back in the day we drank a lot more vitamin d rich milk you know like there were like there was, there was like, I, a I still milk I, campaign you know i, I, I still do it today I, that's why. I used i used to drink skim uh my i used to call it blue milk and uh, skim milk and i just it was just terrible so i, I you know about 10 or 15 years ago I decided I'm I'm going to use, use whole milk. I like it better with my with my uh, honey nuts in the morning and my coffee, and it's just uh, that sounds delicious. Uh, get babies, you know, just love you all. We love you too, Big Willie. So yeah, Big Willie. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I don't know. I just I I I've always I've always had very very strong bones, uh, and and that's because I'm a good milk drinker. And I <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> You know, you you like mother's milk in natural containers. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> hey. Oh god. This this is not supposed to be comedy central. We're supposed to be talking about UFOs <laughs> and things that go bump in the night. Yeah. <laughs> We're serious. Yeah. We're super serious. But, you know, sometimes if you look at a UFO from a distance, it looks kind of like a boob. Hey. That's true. So, yeah. 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 That's yeah. True. All good things look that's like true. It's Unless it's a cigar yeah. shaped one. <laughs> yeah, it's your matter. Of, it's it's your matter of perspective, Lynn. I I, I look at it yeah, cigar shape, and it looks like a cigar. What does it look yeah. like to you? Yeah. Mommy, yeah, mommy's milk and daddy's milk are completely different. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, oh, that's that's really bad. It's really bad. Yeah, you know, it's bad when you got Jim going. That's bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna they're gonna turn this into the uh, the the uh, the FCC here pretty soon. <laughs> so, have you heard these guys? I haven't. You... <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, we're safe overall on our channel, so I think yeah. you'll be all right. They are yeah, okay. Right. We okay. said much worse on our channel for sure. Yes. <laughs> poor Anne, yeah. poor Anne. Yeah. you horrified her. You horrified yeah. her. <laughs> like five people just dropped out of the chat room. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden, you know, somebody has the the emoji of the little power pile of brown stuff with eyes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so funny, man. You know, speaking of milk, Jim, you were talking about that delicious cereal that you're eating. I think I'm getting to that age to where like I'm having to switch cereals because because now when I when I you know indulge in, in some cinnamon toast crunch or lucky charms, like man, my stomach hurts all day long. And I don't know what that's all about, man. I, I think I'm gonna have to switch to the, the natural grains and nuts. But my wife got a box like a month ago. I haven't opened it yet. Um, I switched to toast. <laughs> like I just can't do it. <laughs> she loves it. I don't know. I don't know why she likes it so much. I guess it, it it is good. I had a bite. It's just you know, when you're when you're making the switch from Lucky Charms to like honey honey wheat <laughs> chunks, like it's just <laughs> man. <laughs> you know, I don't know what to do. Uh, you're 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 a Captain Crunch type of guy, huh? I'm definitely a Captain Crunch type of guy. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. It, oh, and in, in Texas. We, we have uh, you know, we have the crunch berries, you know, and then they have the yes. oops all berries. Well, in uh, Texas, we have the Texas size berries, and those things are like the size of golf balls. You just pour what? like, yeah, you pour like. That's eight a legitimate giant. thing. You have a, like special Texas Captain Crunch crunch yeah, berry. Te awesome. Texas size berries. Yeah, they're massive. You pour like eight berries into a bowl, and you just go to town. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> like a bowl of meatballs. <laughs> yeah. like, like meatballs. That's amazing. Meat me me metals. <laughs> Yeah, it's good stuff. yeah, yeah. I, you, you know, I think it's a marketing thing. If we really spruce up the design of the of of the the cereal, the nuts and grains and and clusters of of fun for for, for grown ups, though, you know, instead of just you know time, Times New Roman on a black, uh, you know, like a white uh, background, 
you know, we add some color and maybe some holographics or like put a puzzle on the back. Then it would be fun, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, as a kid, you know, when I grew up, you know, we, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have color TV. We had three stations. And the, the fun thing that you did in the morning, you read this cereal box. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> and, I they, that too. and they had interesting stuff on there. Oh my god! Oh, I get so mad when I'm trying to do the when I'm trying to do the maze on the back, and my wife is like, "Hmm, how many calories are in this?" I'm like, "I was just gonna say that's what I read now." I just I just, <laughs> I just lost my spot. Now I have to start the maze all over again. Thanks a oh, lot. Oh damn! <laughs> and there's like a, a a pin mark that just goes across the back of it because I was trying to fill it out. <laughs> she's like, she's like, you you are a 35 year old man. Uh, <laughs> It's not that important. And I go pout in the other room for a little while. <laughs> yeah. Texas sized berries, and I think I'm out. Yeah. He's yeah. fast. You said Cap worse. Come on. Crunch. Crunch. I mean, they could they could they could make a, a a a crunch berries for all kinds of states, you know, like yeah. uh, Arizona. You know, they could put like cactus berries in there or Ooh. something. You know, for like Delaware, they could just make everything gray. Like. Uh, and this and this is all without drugs, huh? <laughs> all without drugs. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. I get off at six. And uh, I worked a little ways away, and I was like, "I gotta drive home and get there." So no drugs. Aww. I came home and I hopped right up here, got on. I got some chicken pot pie waiting for me downstairs. Uh, <laughs> I just put my put our baby to baby to sleep and hopped on. I was sorry, I was a little late, but oh hey, no, no worries, yeah. no worries. How's the baby? Yeah. Oh, she's good. She's she's yeah. very good. She got her our little two toofies, uh, two front two bottom teeth. Aww. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Awesome. yeah, I have those too. Yeah. Ruling <laughs> Not impressive, Ben. We all have <laughs> bottom. Oh, feet. I have those too. Okay. Yeah. Whoa, big show. But I started out with a whole bunch, and I did. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> all right, okay. <laughs> oh my god! That's oh so my god! Awesome. <laughs> bunch of we're a bunch of sickos. Yeah. <laughs> So, All right, that's why the world loves you guys. What are you smoking, Joe? Oh, uh, just it's, just my my vape. Yeah, uh -oh. just my vape. Gross. Nothing uh, illegal, it, right? No, nothing illegal. No, I it's it's kind of a bummer. Well, it's not a bummer. I, <laughs> yeah, I I should just quit cold turkey. You know, I I'm just not strong enough uh, to do it. But I I kicked it down to like a, a really low nicotine level. And uh, I just hit it all the time because I'm I I getting my fix. You know, I need to quit. I, I just need to cut man. it. I smoked from the time I was 12 until I was 32. And yeah. when I quit smoking, I was smoking three packs of cools a day. Ooh, oh yeah. God. That'll get you. Wow, yeah. I was and a two, I, two I went cold, guy. I went cold turkey on March 13th, 1978. I have not touched one since. Man, yeah. That's definitely a day you will remember. Like, Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I had quit a dozen times before that, but not permanently. Uh huh. And I, had, I did it for my son. I did it for my son's second birthday. And I keep, I give him, I give him shit all the time uh, today because he smokes. I said, James, I said, I quit for you. You have three <laughs> boys. I only had one. What the hell are you doing? I did so, this for you. <laughs> so he went out, he went out and just got himself one of the coolest, most high tech, expensive Harleys. And uh, he said, Dad, he says, uh, when I got the Harley, I just, I realized that. I'm going through almost five hundred dollars a month in cigarettes. Oh my god! And that's a that's a Harley payment. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's hard to smoke a cigarette on a Harley, so it's just <laughs> yeah, useless. yeah. And he and his he has quit again. He quit for about three years, and then when when COVID hit, and he works exclusively in hospitals. He's a construction superintendent, hmm. and uh, he just started smoking again because you know life was just so stressful. Plus, mm -hmm. he was going through he was going through a. a an end of a marriage and a bunch of other stuff. So, but he's, yeah, he, he said, dad, he said, I'm, I've quit smoking. I'm not going to try it again. Um, and, and again, it's, 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 it's hard to keep the cigarette lit or even to light it when you're doing 70 miles an hour and uh, <laughs> your hands free and in, in traffic and go, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but he, he does wear his helmet. And I gave him, when I got rid of my Harley, matter of fact, my Harley just got, totaled last week oh no uh, uh -oh. i gave it i gave it to my best friend uh, he didn't have anything uh 
He didn't have a pot to pee in or wonder the shroud out of, but he would he would give up his life for me if I'd mm-hmm. asked him to. So I I've let him ride my my Harley. It's a Road King Classic, you know, for the Ooh, last nice. you know, last seven years. And he got in, into a fender bender, and the insurance company uh, totaled it. He said it was you know, a lot of it's just cosmetic. He said said I can for less than a thousand dollars I can have it looking brand new again. I said well oh, wow. Uh, they're going to scrap it out. I'm going to uh, let you keep the motorcycle, and I'll turn. The, I'll sign the title over to you, and it'll have to have a sal- salvage title. But he deserves to have it. Nice. Um, that's, nice. that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. and uh, again, he's he's been my he's been my best friend since March. No, since uh, September 9th, nineteen sixty two. Wow, that's so awesome. It's going yeah. to be sixty years this year that. Uh, Rick Branham has been my best friend. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm blessed that way. I have a number. I have quite a few friends that we go back over fifty years. Wow, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. And then I have you guys, and I and I really do. And I've I've mentioned this to everybody. I'm not I'm not a joiner. I don't I don't belong to clubs. I've you know I'll join something after a while. You know, I'm tired of this crap. I don't need to. I don't need the <laughs> static. I don't need the heartburn. But I really really do. I en- I enjoy. I enjoy you guys, all of you, Lynn. You know, maybe not so much Ben, but Joe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh, okay. I'm just, really, I'm just here really to hang do, out. I really do. I I I I've. I felt comfortable from day one. I am, uh, you know, I have nothing to prove. I'm just me. I've just been doing it forever. Uh, and I'm more than willing to, you know, to share my time with anybody who's willing to listen to me, you know, ramble about. But I do feel, I feel welcome in this group. I feel comfortable in this group. And I honestly do really like 99.9% of you, Ben. Hey, we love you, man. Yeah, yeah. you I mean, you're okay. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yo, I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I haven't shit sent you a shirt, isn't it? I'm, I'm That's kidding. right. That's right. I mean, uh, yeah, mostly Sicilian, and I and I have I have some relatives in Chicago that may come and give you a visit <laughs> if I don't. Get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys understand? Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. I think I get what you okay. put down over there. Yeah. <laughs> now, we 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 sort of wa- we sort of wandered off into the twilight zone here, haven't we? Yeah, it's okay. It's always good to have a yeah. fun night. And just hang yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I had a laugh. I was telling Lynn earlier that uh, I was uh, on with Richard Hoagland last night, and well, not him because he still doesn't have a voice. But it was the fourth Sunday in a row that uh, we tried to you know, have a program. You know, the first the first Sunday uh, it was a month ago. You know, my end was was screwed up. Uh, Skype had, uh, was loaded improperly on my computer, and I couldn't link up with anything. So we got that cleared up, and then Richard lost power. He had no power, you know, at his place. And then last week. I didn't have a voice, and he didn't either. He, you know, he's in, uh, breathing all the smoke from the fires in New Mexico. I'd been, uh, I was a typhoid Mary, also known as, as Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there in Fresno, and uh, you know, I drove. I, I spent, I spent four days in the in the San Joaquin Valley. It's eight hundred miles of nothing but things that are growing and blooming. And literally, I could I could not have yelled for help if my life depended on it. My voice was so shot. Oh damn! And uh, it's I, I still I still have a, a you know a, a, it's still a bit rough in there. I don't know if you can hear it. Um, my voice has always been a little bit scratchy. But uh, did did you did you hear about uh, uh, Sonny on his way back from Vegas that uh, out in the desert? Uh, is that what you're talking about? Like out in the desert where there's like literally nothing around? No, no he said everything was growing and blooming. That's oh, the opposite of a desert. That's the op- okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no. I mean, uh, the, the 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 biggest food basket in the world is the San Joaquin Valley in Central California. It's 800 miles of agriculture, mm. and uh, and 
I, I never had problems with, with allergies until I moved to Seattle. And then I thought I had a brain tumor. I, and years later, it did end up I have a brain tumor, but that's beside the point. Should have with your gut instinct, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think they put an alien implant in my head. And I mean, they, they, they were in my head for, for nine and a half hours. So uh, it's possible, dude. Yeah. I wasn't supposed to survive. And I must, you know, I must be Superman because I did. I mean, Man. strong bones, brain surgery, falling off stages. <laughs> I mean, you were a regular hey, Iron Man. <laughs> coming back, coming back from Sturgis in 2013. I'm in, I'm about four miles west of Friona, Texas. Now Friona's on US 6070. Uh, I'm doing 70 miles an hour. It's, it's August 13th, 2013. And I hit four inches of standing water on the road doing 70 miles an hour. Oh my and gosh. the bikes, the bikes started going, you know, back, just back and forth. And my only thought was, oh shit, I didn't want to go this way. I didn't, I wasn't worried about dying, but I didn't, you know, I didn't want my, my, my wife to have to claim a pile of hamburger as her once husband. Right. I walked away from it and I still don't know how I did it. I mean, literally I left the motorcycle at 70 miles an hour. They said I, I skidded and hydroplaned it for about a quarter, no, about a quarter of a mile. Damn. And when I stopped, I was, I was straddling both westbound lanes and I'm, I'm laying on my back and somewhere in between for about two seconds, I was conscious and I'm like this moving right along with my motorcycle. And it's a good thing there weren't those bumps, you know, the reflectors. It, oh, torn the, it would have torn the snot out of me, but I, yeah, I know I rolled, I rolled uh, lengthwise, you know, uh, a couple, three or four times, my chaps are all torn up on the on the sides and on the tops, on the on the fronts. Damn. But when I finally stopped, I'm laying there. I don't have any pain. I said, "Oh God, I hope my feet are where they're supposed to be." And I looked down, and they were right where they're supposed to be. And I wiggled my toes, and that worked out good. And I raised this arm up; it was fine. I raised this one up, and I have a little bit of rash. That's it. Oh Whoa, God. that's it. That's crazy. And question. I'm everybody had everybody had everybody had stopped. I just get up and go to the shoulder because my next my my thought to before I got up was I hope there isn't an eighteen wheeler with eighty thousand pounds of hogs right behind me because I'm straddling both lanes. Yeah, oh my gosh. and I just got up and and people were just dumbfounded. How in the hell did you get up? I said I don't know. I didn't get I didn't get hurt. Damn. Even the even the paramedics that came they said you know you, Mr. Goodall you should be on the middle of the road with a sheet over you. Yeah. I said, yeah, I know, <laughs> but it wasn't my time. It wasn't so, my time. I have to, so, I, I have to know, Jim, like, did your slacks, <clears throat> did your slacks survive that? Yeah. Accident? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 No, yeah, didn't, I didn't, even, I didn't even have to go home and change my shorts. It was just, <laughs> it, it happened so fast. Oh my God. And, and it was of no consequence <laughs> other than it was about $7,000 worth of cosmetic damage to my bike. Yeah. My load, my, my load didn't leave. It was still strapped down tight. Everything on the right side was ground down. Even uh, even my engine guard, it was it ground the the cast aluminum peg all the way off, and then it then it ground into the uh, you know, chrome molly uh, engine guard. And you can see the inside of of the of the tube. So there was a lot of grinding going on, and absolutely none of it affected me. That's yeah, I'm crazy. Yeah, hey. so. I'm, so I, I gotta ask you, like, you know, you were safe, you know, your bike was a little bit messed up. You had a little bit of a rash, you know, at some point on that, on that, uh, that journey back home, did you think to yourself, that was kind of cool? Like, <laughs> no, it was I just, scary. You were like, I, it was kind of cool. I just, I just walked away from that. It's kind of cool. Right. I mean, it was, it was amazing that I walked away and, and literally everybody, including the, including the police and, and the uh, paramedics, they said, you should be on the middle. He said, Cause he asked me, he said, well, Mr. Goodall, how old are you? I said, uh, it was just, it was, you know, I think it was 68 or 69. And he said, uh, he said, you know, you, you should be out there with a sheet over you. You shouldn't be up here talking to me, you know, laughing and, and carrying on. <laughs> he said, you want to go to the hospital? I said, no, I don't, I didn't, I didn't get hurt. A little, lost a little bit of skin, but that was it. So fast, yeah, but I called my wife and she had just landed in Seattle. I said, uh, so I want to let you know I had a major accident on my motorcycle. I left the I left the the, uh, the Harley doing seventy miles an hour, 
and said, but I'm okay. So, so I don't pay, I'm not paying attention with the road I'm on. I hit Clovis and I'm supposed to head down towards 70, but I go straight on 60 and I go to, uh, uh, was it, I can't remember the name, but name of the, uh, the, uh, the next town, but it's Fort Sumner, Fort Sumner. And, I, and things didn't look right. So I pulled my map out and I took a look and I'm, I, I'm a hundred miles north of where I wanted to be. I was heading to Roswell. So I decided I went back into town, filled up with gas and I went down, uh, New Mexico 20. And I, I was told later that's the, one of the most desolate stretches of road in the state, state of New Mexico. There's almost never any traffic there. And if I had hit a coyote or an armadillo or something like that, I'd probably still be laying on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Man, yeah. we uh, we ran over an armadillo one time, and it just popped our tire, and it walked away. Really? Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, we, we, have, we have the equivalent, not quite of – Armadillos are not armored, but we have javelinas. They're desert Ooh. pigs. Uh -huh. yep. And they're described as boulders with legs. If you hit one with a car, your the front of your car is toast. They're just solid. Wow. Yeah, I they're mean, they're solid. solid. They're just rock, rock solid. And you probably don't, you probably wouldn't even hurt them. You probably knock some of the dirt off of them, and that's about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh so, yeah. They would, they would turn they around like and try to challenge you, probably. Yeah, or, and, they, and they have they, they have teeth like this. I mean, they're yeah. they're nasty. The rooters, and they'll avoid people if they can. But we have a we have a pack of them that uh, they've actually been to our front door. And there was thirteen of them out in the street, and you don't, and they don't they don't see very well, and they don't hear very well, but they smell. I mean, yeah, you can smell them. They're, they're, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They've so got, like the scent gland on their back and like if they feel oh, threatened, really? they just, yeah, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so call them stump pigs in Texas. So, so they, you know, he's at the, the down at the end of the driveway and I, I pick up a rock and I throw it at him and all his bristles went straight up. I mean, he almost doubled in size. I, I yeah. told Rosemary, I said, I'm going in the house now. <laughs> Why'd you throw a rock <laughs> at him? Well, he was, he was, was chewing, it was chewing some, it was chewing, it was chewing some of the shrubbery. <laughs> it's not for him to eat. I planted those roses not even a month ago, and you're rooting, you're rooting there. Yeah, dude. yeah. This was <laughs> this was cat. He was eating cactus, so that's what uh, they do. That is uh, crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's it's so crazy to think like when you thinking about like javelinas, or, like wild hogs, and like just stuff like that. Like it's crazy. Like you can take a domesticated pig and then let him out of the pen. And let him run around, and then he turns into a hog. Like that's just three, what they three do. months. Three months later, he's feral. Yeah, really. Wow. Yeah, they they grow like real thick hair. The tusks get real big, really? and they're no longer a domesticated pig. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, my ex wife is like that. My ex wife is like that. <laughs> All of a sudden, late at night, you, if you hear a strange uh, noise in the woods, that's just uh, a, a pack of eggs' wives just yeah. rummaging yeah. through the forest, <laughs> rummaging, eating shrubberies. I've had more than I've had more than my share. Yeah, as an yes. ex-wife, I can say this is true. Yes, yeah. yeah. Lynn loves leader. shrubberies. <laughs> Big fan of shrubberies. I, I would I would say something, but this may be a family program, so I won't. <laughs> I yeah. had to doubt that. I yeah. had to doubt it is. <laughs> I remember the yeah. first time I, I found out about that, I was like, wait, you, you just take like a regular pig and let it loose and they turn crazy? And he was like, that's, yeah. Because I, I had family that used to like hunt hogs and stuff and they would, you know, they would use dogs and, and, and big old knives. They would just wait in trees and then the dogs would chase them down into like a little ravine. And then when they would all be down there, the dogs would separate one or two and jump out of the trees, cut it and haul it off and one time they were like oh this must have been like a, a domesticated pig at one time because it wasn't very feisty and i was like what do you mean he was like yeah it's just a, a a pig that got out of the pasture and turned into a wild hog i was like wow that's how that happens they were like yeah that's exactly how that happens i thought yeah. you were gonna say it had like a collar with a name tag on it <laughs> yeah that would have been nuts his name was ralph <laughs> <laughs> no poor ralph oh, no. Yeah. Ralph the pig, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a great name for a pig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't so, know what I have more questions about these like wild domesticated pigs or your like family members hunting with knives and trees. 
Like, I don't know where to start with that. (laughs) I mean, we had guns, too, just in case. But, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I was going to say, like, did they have an issue with it? Is it just more, like, like, to become one with the pig to use the knife while jumping out of a tree? Like More sport, yeah. I have Uh, images of you just jumping out of a tree, like, that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean you got you got you know you wear vests and stuff and protective gear but but even then like if if you get caught you're you oh they they can cut better. they can they can open up like a you know like a can of sardines instantly yeah, yeah. it's it's, it's, just, it's just about, like, domestication that keeps the tusks at bay the uh they do a lot of like rutting and stuff to find you know so like they end up growing those real big and it's used for defense like having to defend yourself it's like being in nature sets off that internal like wild clock and they're like okay time to beef up time to rut time to grow big husks but whenever you're they're in a pen you know they have no need for that they have food ready for them they don't have to defend themselves as much so they're just a little more domesticated those hormones don't kick in um so yeah it's it's it's, crazy. it's pretty cool. I used to own a few pigs and it always bummed me out because I was kind of new into the whole thing. And uh, they had like those little sticks, you know, and you 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 pop the pig with the stick and make it walk around. But I uh, I, I had this really neat trick where I would take a box of Nella wafers and I would put the stick, the tip of the stick inside the, the Nella wafers. And then I would take it out the next day and that pig would follow me all around the place. I didn't have to do anything. He would just follow me and I would just drop little Nella wafers. And Aww. yeah, you teach it to pay play fetch. I mean, pigs are really smart. Like they're yeah, really, they really smart. They're really smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're 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 pretty cool animals. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't keep one. Like you know, there's some people that keep them in the house and stuff. I want to do that. I mean, <laughs> no, my dad was an animal nut, and like he had a friend who had a, a Vietnamese pot belly pig that he needed to get rid of, and so my dad was like, okay, well, we'll take it and try it to see how it works. We had a dog, and, and I think probably a cat at the time too. That thing was horrible horrible and i love animals and that thing was just horrible it's <laughs> not cute not hey, cute it, it was horrible <laughs> and like it's horrible and it like pressed its snout up against my leg to push me back every time it saw me i don't know what it had against me <laughs> you figured you, figured you were a pushover <laughs> yeah get knocked uh, over every five seconds by yeah. the stupid thing that's I was like, hilarious I that. it's the worst thing yeah. in the world <laughs> We've, you, we have, we have descended into chaos. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hopefully you didn't tell the, tell this pig how horrible he was like to his snout. Oh, I did. You know? I did. Oh. Well, I had words yeah, with that pig. <laughs> I, had words. I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand anybody who go out and get a you know, pot belly pig because uh. it's a pig. <laughs> yeah I, I just i just imagine a scene of, of of lynn cooking up some bacon the next morning admiring <laughs> her new strawberry she yeah. acquired yes yeah. how's that big now huh how's that yeah. 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 <laughs> you're right it was cute tastes delicious yep yeah yeah <laughs> and i hated it sausage so. anyone <laughs> yeah yeah now so. be nice yeah <laughs> yeah. F- finally i enjoy this thing <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah this pig was good for so, something so where were you out where we're going and where we where have we been joe around the world man <laughs> man uh you know yeah. we've we've really been uh we've really been just kind of you know with Ben having a, a, a new, a newborn and, and, you know, and just, you know, I'm, I just recently switched jobs. Like Ben and I have kind of been hanging out, you know, we've been, you know, we stay on the show. We do the show. We haven't done anything too, too crazy. As of late, we did go to Vegas and hang out with you guys. Uh, you know, we finally got an editor uh, on for the the documentary. So hey, how's you know, that, how's that coming by the way? It's come along pretty good. Yeah, it's going yes. good. Yeah. So we, so it's Christmas. Uh I'm hoping that's yeah, we're hoping like Christmas it'll be done. Like honestly, yeah. We, we was it was supposed to come out this spring and uh that did not happen. So yeah. I we reached out to a professional and uh it, you may you may know him is is uh, s- uh screen name on YouTube and Twitter is Tupacabra and uh, he's an awesome oh, yeah. filmmaker. Yeah, awesome oh, filmmaker awesome. director. He's made made a, a a few movies but like uh primarily he's done like short uh documentaries and music videos. I mean the guy's yeah. just super creative has awesome vision. So I'm really stoked to see what uh, what he could put together. I'm I'm really excited. That's me awesome. me too. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's I a, mean we we had uh was it was last year or year before last? We were in Sedona. Yeah. yeah. Last year. Yeah. yeah. It was last, last year. Last yeah. June. Yeah. And I had, earlier in the week I'd been at the Lockheed Skunk Works doing a book signing and I ended up uh, in Sedona with the UFO garage guys and it was uh, it was just it was a, a, a fun bunch of days. I mean, we were at the Bradshaw Ranch, yes, uh, which is sort of like a Skinwalker, but in Arizona. Uh, I know we had uh, we were out there with Melinda Leslie and uh, the rest of the crew. Yeah, at we got there. We I got at the ranch at eleven p.m. I think we got back to uh, the B and B at. Uh, was it 3 a.m. or 3 30? About yeah. that time. Because it was like uh -huh. an hour to drive out there, an hour back. So, yeah. like, all yeah. in all, it, we got back late and we had been like staying up for, like the past two nights and like doing production and filming and stuff. And yeah, I was like dead tired, but yeah, there was no way I wasn't going to go out with you guys at the Brad's car. I mean, and, that was that was really fun. And we just so happened to go with the two guys that knew exactly where it was and we got lost. <laughs> remember that <laughs> oh yeah oh my god <laughs> they were like they were like where are they going they were like that's the long way and then we showed up like 30 minutes later after everybody oh, else <laughs> and they were like dude oh, where are we at they were like whispering up front where we should have <laughs> yeah we should have rode with uh uh jim y'all y'all and uh and melinda and and Lorian and Jocelyn, because these the guys that we were with, the camera, the camera operator that we went with, they yeah, they got lost. We should have we should have went with you guys. That would have been I yeah, know. would have saved us a lot of time. If you guys, Kids. if anybody's listening right now that that uh doesn't really know a whole lot about Bradshaw Ranch or or want want to look into it a little bit more, uh look up on YouTube. There's a, a new documentary that just came out. It's called Hoodoo Tall. H O O D O O. T A L L Hoodoo Tall. Um, he did a really good documentation of the ranch. It's it's uh yeah. it's 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 long, but there's so much in it. It's a lot of cool footage and video and and just stories about the ranch. Uh, it's it's pretty in depth. Um, I know even though I've been there, I still didn't know half the stuff that he was talking about. So I found it to be really interesting. Hoodoo Tall, check it out. He, 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 he showed he showed me a, a a shot that he had taken at night i mean they're at bradshaw ranch mm -hmm. and if you look if you look in the shadows of course it's pitch black uh, you know most everybody has a has, has, you know gen, I think gen one uh, night vision scopes you know mm -hmm. we're all looking at things flying through the sky mm -hmm. at midnight they're not being illuminated by the sun they aren't you know they aren't satellites they're going this way and then zip i mean crossing yeah. over moving and doing i mean it was it was really it was really really interesting yeah, yeah. Do, and, do you remember and, the one that was stationary blinking at us for a really long time that like didn't move but it was just yeah. blinking that was strange yeah it's probably it's probably a cia plant up there <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's not yeah, but That's uh, not no, the it's just that had like the crazy guy right that killed the alien with the sword or something like do you know what i'm talking oh, about gosh that sounds awesome. Don't you don't know about this story? Okay, That's hold on. I'm going to look it up. Keep talking. It might be Stardust Ranch. I could be wrong. Hold oh, on. Oh, yeah. This, yeah, he was like the owner of the place. And a very similar story that like there were aliens coming in all the time. And he claimed he killed an alien with like a sword that he just happened to have. That's on. awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, who doesn't <laughs> have a sword? I have a sword. Yeah, right? <laughs> if you don't have a sword, you're doing something. You got to, I mean. You got to keep that thing on you. You got to keep you it know? that. <laughs> Yeah. At all times, I'll send you guys the stuff. Yeah, it is start a French. Yeah, but no one found an article. Ex wives come rummaging through the forest. The 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 yeah, that is awesome. That's the coolest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, a uh, a killed an alien with a sword. That's a story I've never heard before. You I mean, know? he'd he'd come, would have you know, become a billionaire if he would have kept the body. I think and, he said he did have. If I'm remember, it's been a while since I heard the story. I think he said he did have the body but then i don't remember if something happened to it or he was still just keeping it under wraps in a freezer or something i don't it was no, very that was that was, was, that was his ex-wife in the freezer oh my god might have been, might have been. I, yeah. I have heard a story where a guy had a body 
and he kept it in the freezer and like he yeah, like pulls it out and he unwraps it and he shows you i don't know if it's the same guy but if it is the same guy that's awesome because i love finding like the beginning of people's stories when i've only heard the last half yeah. that's <laughs> awesome yeah probably <laughs> like, man, yeah. i bet that was a cool story too bad i'm never gonna find that again <laughs> so you heard the story that you got to the part where he had the body but didn't ask how it got there you're just like yes <laughs> Yeah, I'm good with that. I was like, "Oh, cool! <laughs> that guy yeah. has an alien in his freezer. I've always wanted an alien in my freezer." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alien, yeah. That's awesome. I'm, that that's the end for me. I'm just... <laughs> yeah, that's enough. Wheel of Fortune started, and, and then I just and... go tell all my friends, like, "Hey, you know, there's a guy with an alien in his freezer." <laughs> you know crazy. what discernment is? That's a big word. I don't know. Now, I, know. I, I, I can't. I, I don't recall his name. He's, he's from Michigan. He's one of the Bigfoot guys. And he was uh, there at uh, I think uh, Dave Scott showed it to me, or man, no, the 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 uh, the guy and his uh, it was a guy and his son. They have a FLIR, uh, your infrared uh, tracking uh, camera on the bottom, you know, bottom of a helicopter, and they're chasing a Sasquatch. At I mean, and he's illuminated, and this thing is huge, and he takes a step over a clearing that they're familiar with. One step, it was 12 and a half feet. Whoa. Jeez. And they, you know, they tracked him. They tracked him from the air and he kept looking up and pointing. And they, they you know, they they had him on uh, for for minutes, not seconds, but minutes as they're following him. And they, he finally gets you know, gets into, I don't know if they ran out of uh uh if they're getting short on fuel and they had to head back or whatever, but it, it was it's probably the most phenomenal thing i've ever seen and the 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 game the the way it was walking or running it's the same as the 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 one you know the world famous one is as, as looking back as as he's walking across the uh yeah the patterson gimbal he does like, like the same yeah. walking gate as, the as same the, the same gate. yeah the same gate and the whole bit and it was just and the fact that it was one step i mean you see this this thing stepping over this clearing and it's the guy's familiar with it. It's, it's over. It's over twelve feet across, and there was no effort. It was just one boom, and he was across. Uh, that's and, uh, that's awesome. There's something similar to, to back to that documentary Joe was talking about with the hoodoo tall. He got some some similar tracks. That, yeah, that were like yeah, like yeah. twelve feet apart. And then you know they you know they had some uh, footprints that they were looking at. They were 15, 18 inches t tip, you know, heel to toe. And, and they're, they're sunk in about four, you know, four inches in the, in the hard dirt. Wow. And the guy said, you, you can get you can get up on a, uh, a tree stump and jump in one area, you know, weighing 200, 250 pounds. And you go down about half an inch. These things were down four inches. What did that thing weigh? How big was it? And they're saying that, you know, they were 12, 14 feet tall. Golly. That's huge. Yeah. And huge. People, why we never we've never found any remains of them. Well, we've never found any remains of of, of bears either. Yeah. Or other other large mammals because when you die either they maybe they have like the you know the uh, secret uh, elephant burial ground, maybe they have a you know a secret sasquatch mortuary somewhere in you know in the Sierras or the Cascades oh, yeah. or the, or the uh the Rockies. Because you don't you don't find that stuff in the in the wild. It just doesn't exist because it's being recycled. I mean, a creature, a, a mammal of sorts, uh, dies in in the uh, in the forest. Well, that's, that's a you know that's a that's a buffet for you know for at least a month of every critter you know in the area that that's you know that wants you know, wants to have a good meal. So yeah. and and same with the bones. So how can he chew all the bones up? I can watch my German Shepherd take a hind leg bone of a cow and crack it. Yeah. So, and he and she just chomps on it, and she's not a big shepherd either. She's only at sixty pounds, but yeah, uh, you usually finish it off in like a day or two. Yeah, right. If you yeah, let or it. less, or less. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So no, there's 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 a lot of reason why we haven't we haven't found uh, the, the evidence of of Sasquatches or the evidence of uh, aliens. Because if you know, if for some reason they they perish in the wilderness, they're going to be you know, Mother Nature is going to uh, recombine them with Earth, 
and they're just going you know, to dust to dust. But they're out there, and I'm just wait, I'm just waiting for something really really exciting to happen in multiple areas. I want I want I want something like Harry and the Hendersons to happen with the Sasquatch. Yeah. <laughs> I want yeah, I want to see something like Paul on Aliens. Uh, have you seen that movie? Oh yeah, yeah it's Johnny. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> Lynn, have you seen it? I haven't. It's funny. You're the second person that's asked you that in like the last couple of weeks. I got to watch it. Go into Netflix or wherever you, you wherever you go and type in Paul. Yeah. Kristen Wiig is in there. The two Brits that are funnier oh, yeah. in hell. And I can't. Yeah. And uh, it, it it's it is really really qu quite enjoyable. And that and that's and that's way it's. I think that's that's how we're going to have our first. You know, you and I or the four of us are going to have our first encounter with. With an alien, it's going to be something like that. We're going to be at the Little Alien and, <laughs> uh, and you know, driving through Tipico Valley and almost run one of these guys over or something like that. And it's uh, <laughs> yes, uh, with our powers combined, yes, right. I can make it. I think we can make it happen. <laughs> Got to put the right vibes out there, right? You know, right. drive, you know, drive a little slower. Well, yeah, you know, it, yeah. <laughs> I had I had to I had to believe this is for uh, angels or, or, or life. Uh, what happens to wild animals who feeds on alien meat? Mm. Uh, probably no different than than Joe having a you know having a, a pig burger somewhere or, or something like that. It's just <laughs> as long as you're not Jewish, it's okay. Yeah, right. Uh, and uh, got to be kosher. Yes. Oh yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, I don't think I don't think there'll be any any repercussions uh, on a another a cre a, a Earth-based based creature you know, consuming a, a dead alien. I don't think I don't think there'd be anything negative to go with it. Even if it may change their DNA. Um, Ooh, yeah. 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 Our urologist has a good good point. They might die of a bacterial infection too, because there might be weird, funky alien bacteria. Yeah, I mean, you you think about like if even if they did come from a, another uh, galaxy of some kind, you know, there, there are many different elements that exist out there that mm -hmm. don't exist here, and our elements kind of work together. So if they are made of some strange element we don't know about yet, I mean, it's possible you eat that and then <laughs> and then you die, you know. But <laughs> hey, have I you try. seen? Have you seen? And it's only about a two year, maybe three year old movie. It's called Life. Life. Uh, oh, you. I don't think so. You got to watch it. It will scare the bejesus out of you. They oh, go to man. Mars. A group goes to Mars. They're pay, they're bringing back a soil sample. They're on a uh, large ship coming, you know, a large spacecraft coming back, and they're 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 messing with it. You know, they're you know, it's it's inert. At least they think it is. And something happens, and they. Uh, they put an electrical charge across it, and next thing you know, there's th there's some movement in the in the dirt, mm. and a and a little tentacle comes up and is sort of uh, moving around, and it goes from there, and it is it is a real uh, uh, it's it's something to make your eyes get really really big because it it could happen here. I mean, they want. Yeah. The idiot, the idiots want to want to bring back to Earth, not to the International Space Station that's isolated, and then we can nuke it in space and not, you know, not destroy the whole Earth. They want to bring that crap down here and play with it. What, what kind? Of, we don't we don't know what kind of organism exists on either an asteroid or in Mars, and they want to bring it back here. No, that's not a very good idea. Yeah, but. But uh, you know they're they're talking about you know multiple samples of of uh, dirt and rock and 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 other stuff they want to bring back to Earth. No, no, you don't bring you don't bring something like that back. Period. You bring it to a space station or a location on the moon or something, but not right. on Earth. You don't you don't bring that you don't bring that back here. Uh, for all we know, Mars used to be just like us until someone brought. Yeah, brought in something from the asteroid belt, and it you know uh, Mars became a dead planet. Yeah. Why? What caused it? And it yeah you know, you know, the 
in the back of my head, you know, if something's going to go, if something's going to go terribly wrong, it's going to go terribly wrong on a very large scale. If it is, as it deals with the things that go bump in the night and aliens and, and what have you. I mean, it's just, and I don't think and the, earth, the earth isn't ready for it. We don't have the defenses for it. Yeah. And then, I mean, and, and then, you know, there's a, there's a number, there's a number of people out there that are, that are uh, saying that, well, uh, we, we have to be fearful of, of aliens. If they wanted to do a number on us, they had the, you know, if they have the means to go across the universe, they have, you know, they have the means to do whatever they want to do to you and I, there's yeah. nothing stopping it. If they, they may not be any smarter, but they, you know, they, they're, you know, their evolution uh, has you know, moved them you know, past the point that we are. And it's, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I do not want, I do not want to see a, a, an alien invasion happening, you know, happening here where, you know, where the, where we get infected with something that, you know, they've, they've brought back from, uh, from some other planet or some other asteroid. I'm not, I'm not being paranoid about it, but I'm just being you know, cautious. I mean, when, when the first guys went to the moon, they were isolated for two weeks. You know, they, you know, they weren't allowed out of their little uh, airstream. Uh, but that really wasn't a very good con you know, containment unit either. Uh, just, you know, I mean, because you're smoking cigarettes and just like, I don't know, air <laughs> yeah, with the top the open. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it, it's, it's, so, it's something that, you know, there, there's, there, I, I have to believe that there are international protocols uh, dealing with in the introduction of alien species, whether it's, whether it's a plant, whether it's an organism onto our earth, because, it's like when you when you when you bring in a uh, uh, a, cre a creature or a plant that's not native to the area, it has no natural mm -hmm. enemies, and it takes over. You know, yeah, Eurasian yeah. Eurasian milfoil is a good example. You know, the zebra mussels in in the yep. uh, Great Lakes they're clogging up intakes of power plants because they you know they uh, they replicate so fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, that's that to me is even more scary is like ecological warfare. Like when you start, mm -hmm. you know, you start using nature uh, as, as warfare. I mean, you can very easily send something, you know, into another country, say like take the United States, for example, it wouldn't take much to put an invasive species of some type of, of plant that would just completely decimate our crops within a year or two. Like it, you go, you go to the South, you have, you have what kudzu, I think it is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. taken over whole, you know, you know, whole forest and it, and it's, it's a parasite and it's, it's, it's killing the natural vegetation and you can't kill the stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we have we have zebra mussels real bad here too. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Lake, lake Minnetonka is just outside of Minneapolis and it's about 110 square mile lake. It's spring fed. Um, I forgot how many hundreds of miles of shoreline, but it's like a big ink blot, you know, out just west of the cities. When I first got there in 71, uh, there was areas, you, you can look down 40 feet, see the bottom. And uh, last time I was by Lake Minnetonka during the summer was a couple of years ago. And the Eurasian milfoil is so thick. You could almost, it almost looks like it's, you could walk across from one, from one place to the other, just That's on crazy. the milfoil. Wow. And they said, and there's no way they can get rid of it. I mean, they, the, the lake is so, you know, so large and, and so many little nooks and crannies and bays and whatever, you know, you never, you'll never wipe it all out. So the only way that the only way they could kill it off is that you have to poison the entire lake, and then you have to you know, get all the remnants out, and and then reintroduce re the natural wildlife back into the lake, and that's insane. that is insane. It is insane. insane. And maybe, that you know that maybe maybe Paul Stimmitz is working on a on a cure for that with uh with fungus, you know, because ah. he's. Yeah, he's he's a so he's like a a a, a fungus like a mushroom expert scientist like hmm. he's done all this really interesting research like with mushrooms and stuff and they did this really cool um, um, experiment where they had like three piles of like an oil spill that they had like recreated 
and they 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 seeded one with chemicals and then they they put another compound on another pile and then they put uh fungal spores into the third compound and it turned out that not only did the fungus decompose the oil um, that was inside of it but it also started to attract bugs and create and grow new life out of this massive oil spill and so they've started to use that on like oil spills well they'll go and they'll inject fungal spores that that uh will attack the oil on the top of the surface because it eats the carbon it, it uh, eats all the carbons yeah. out of it yeah uh so that'd be interesting if they could find the same application for for these areas out in nature you know where it's it's being taken over by by you know something invasive that we need to get rid of it'd be nice mm -hmm. to not spray mm -hmm. chemicals all over everything if we can do that, that would be pretty sweet, you know. But is is the is the fungus uh, is it is it part of the of the local environment? Because if you're in it, if you're introducing a foreign substance, a foreign entity into an ecosystem where again it has no natural uh, defenses, it could just it could just go wildfire. I mean, it could go absolutely nuts. So, yeah. And that's, it, it definitely could. You'd have to pick the right one for sure. But how do you how do you pick the right one? You don't. I mean, you don't know. You can always you know pull it out of your butt. So well, we're going to try this, and and yeah, all of a sudden yeah. said, "Oh my God, that we shouldn't have done that." Now what do you do? I oh, never yeah. use that. One. Never. I never think, use yeah. that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we've been doing that for thousands of years. <laughs> yeah. No. It's it's got it's got it's gotten worse. I mean, uh, you know, you with your. Uh, genetically modified uh, uh, feed, food stock. I mean, uh, you know, Monsanto and, and all the uh, agricultural companies, they have all these special uh, hybrids that have been uh, refined down to, you know, so they're, they can they'll double in size with, with one third the water and twice the nutrition and stuff like that. Okay, that's fine and dandy and, until something goes wrong with your genetic splicing and all of a sudden maybe it turns all that into, into something that's toxic to humans. Yeah. Yep. Toxic to, you know, to life in general. And that's, and that's the one thing we have to be really concerned about. We had, you know, I'm as much of a loose cannon as anybody, but they, we, we really need to have good stewards of, of, of the planet. It's yeah. the only one it's at the, t for the time being, it's the only one we have. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I mean, even that stuff. I mean, you're starting to see weeds and insects are becoming resistant to to the stuff that they're doing. It's like the more that they try and in, interfere with Mother Nature, the <laughs> the stronger Mother Nature gets. And we're we're getting to a point to where it's like, okay, well, you can't. We're gonna, it's we're like the gonna, old yeah, yeah. You can't be better than Mother Nature. I mean, she's yeah, gonna you, figure it out. You can't fool Mother Nature. Yep. I mean. Yep. I mean, she's a real bitch, and she's she doesn't like being fooled, and she's going to come by and re just slap you a really good one across the snot nose, you know? And yeah, just, yeah, uh, yeah. It's 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 insane. It's insane. But I, yeah, I know, like with the fungus stuff, I know that they're using cultures of, of like mycelium and stuff like that, which is is something that it's literally you go and dig a hole in your yard and it's there. It's all over the world. It's like the great decomposer. It's what it's it's what the it's how the world was created in the first place was with uh -huh. this stuff, you know. And so you know they've started using it in areas, and and uh, you know that partially answers the question on like well what if it goes crazy well fucking awesome we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a, a great planet that's good because it, it, it already exists everywhere you know it, yeah. it's not like you're you're introducing something brand new um because it it already exists all over the planet so that's but that's but if 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 you have fooled around with it in the lab and you've modified it to be more effective all of a sudden it changes you know changes the biological structure of of the spore or whatever it is. Yeah. If you modify it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. And, and it, it may produce, it may produce something that's it's extremely toxic and yeah. it's, and da dangerous or deadly to humans, maybe yeah. not to other life forms, but to, to humans. And we're, we're a pretty fragile uh, part of the ecosystem. I mean, there, I mean, every, almost everything else out there has the ability to cope with mother nature, except for, us humans, we're a bunch of wusses. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I mean we, just, we just make more like like bigger clothes, or we just move to a different spot if things get tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. 
You have yeah. two solutions. You're like, well, yep. we messed this up. Let's go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. 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 Try it again. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you get a chance, uh, Lynn, look look up the movie Paul. Okay. You'll, you'll you'll thoroughly enjoy it. And the characters, I love. Let's say I love Kristen Wiig. She's always been one of my yeah. favorite. And yeah, she's funny. Uh, and and again, I don't, I can't, I, I can't recall the the two British guys that are the two main characters, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those dudes are hilarious. The ones from Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's just hilarious. It's just hilarious. And then uh, Paul is so good. Yep. Simon yep. Pegg it and is. Nick Frost. There yes. You go. Yep. Oh, yeah. Seth Rogen's in it. Oh, he's the voice of Paul. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Oh, is he? Oh, that's awesome. Uh, 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 uh. I can't do that. <laughs> there that was bad. That was bad. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, it's like the second person in literally a couple of weeks to tell me that I need to watch it, so I'll have to check it out. Yep, yep. And Life mm. is the name the name of that one, and it came out within the last two years. I think it is the last two or three years. So it, you know, sometime in the twenties. Yeah, is is as though life couldn't be more screwed up than it has been. <laughs> uh, this would this would really be this would be icing on the cake if if something like that really happened because. I won't tell you how it. I won't tell you how the thing ends, but it, it, you're gonna go. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Not well. No. That's how it ends. Oh, we got an unidentified S <laughs> four. Hey, how's hey, it going? Hey now, hey now. These are good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we practice. When it goes above my range, Ben sings harmony. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. So, well, oh, Sigourney can, Weaver is in it too. Oh, in Paul or in? Uh, oh yes, yes. She's she's the she's the evil uh, CIA head or uh, <laughs> spook head that. Uh, uh, yeah, you'll enjoy it. I mean, it's just, it's just it's just good fun. And they you know, they have uh, was it uh, Jane Lynch plays oh, Pat that. Travis. Now I adore Pat. But they, you couldn't find someone that is more different than Pat Travis than Jane Lynch. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's, it's it's the equivalent of uh, you know, Joe and I being mistaken for each other. <laughs> <laughs> I would get the good end of that deal, Jim. I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I would yeah. love to take a tour of your facility in the back rooms. <laughs> 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 Like, tell your dumb buddy to wait outside. All right, Jim. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to stay out here. Hey, I'm getting a tour of the facility. <laughs> stay by, stay by the car, Bubba. Just stay, stay by the car, Jim. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh All my right. God. As as we descend into the old bests. Yeah. <laughs> well, I thought you were gonna cut it short today, Lynn. Well, I was, but yeah, you, I have so much fun but, with Ben and Joe. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, I've been having a good listen, time. Yeah, you got. I love. I love the uh, the Saul Good All Mondays. This is this is. Uh, I love the show, Lynn. Your your uh, your channel is awesome. Thank you for. Uh, oh, wait, are we are we signing off now? I don't want to say goodbye if we're not. <laughs> we are now. Oh, oh, yes. oh shit! <laughs> oh man. Uh, I mean, yeah. I guess bef before we get out of here, uh, I, I just wanted to say there's a lot of you guys that are in the chat tonight that uh, come and hang out with us uh, as well uh tomorrow make sure y'all come by um it's been a little bit of a sad time over at the garage as a lot of you know uh we lost a good buddy and yeah. uh so tomorrow we are going to be doing uh all, all all about lewis episode uh just remembering the guy uh he was such a, a good dude he uh you know always made us smile at least once a week and yeah. uh we're gonna miss that guy a lot so yeah if y'all are here tonight y'all hop over tomorrow come check us out and uh we're gonna be having some laughs remember lewis so yeah. it's a feel good times and if, if anybody has a story you know or, or encounter or, or chatted with lewis you know we're kind of opening up the lines if, if anyone wants to call in or 
or uh, you know, share the love because he he definitely shared his love and with us and always made everybody smile. So the yeah. felon five, no, not UCR Lewis. It, it's it's a, it's a different another yeah. Lewis, uh, yeah. Lewis, another Montez. Lewis, Lewis Montez. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so no, not that Lou, and and not the other Lou that we've had on the show. Uh, a lot of Lewis. It's been quite a few Lou's on the show, but uh, there has. Yes. Uh, But only one good all. (laughs) But only one good all. That's for sure. (laughs) And you only had me once and it wasn't, I mean, it it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, it was, it was just, it was just voice. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, video. Oh no, we have video. Yeah. We're in Joe's house in his, his, uh, in his kitchen, right? That one. Yeah. Yeah. We're sitting in the kitchen. Yeah. It's up on YouTube. We got the video up. So yeah. Oh, you did? Yep. It's video. Okay. Unless you're just listening on Spotify, there's no video on there, but I guess we yeah. could put video on there now. I don't know. Um, well, now but, we need to schedule something with both of y'all to come on our show next time. Yeah, so. yeah absolutely. Oh, I'm yeah. always game. I mean, I've, I've, I've told you ever since I met you, I said, all you got to do is let me know. We've got your number. But no, you don't even give me a damn t shirt. <laughs> and you wait, a, you wait a friggin' year on this documentary that's coming out. No, no. Not. How's that being cooperative and, and I, I mean, being fun I, to deal with? Yeah. I, I won't tell I, you I that I have a t-shirt, Jim. But but I'm 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 coming through ta- I'm coming through Taylor, Texas, again this summer sometime. All yeah. right. And hey, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you a lot of heads up. Heck yeah, that'll uh, be awesome. I got a I got a new playscape I just set up in the backyard, Jim, for my little one, so we can swing. Oh, boy, slide down yeah. the slide. We're gonna have yeah. a good time. Good. <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. And and just and just for the uh, for put you guys. Uh, Give you a little bit of perspective. When I was out in California, uh-huh. uh I paid almost seven dollars for a gallon of gas. Ooh. Ooh. That's terrible. And, and that was that was regular. I decided I couldn't. I, I wasn't going to put an extra dollar of a gallon in for premium. Mm-hmm. That's too no. Nope. And, nope. and, and I've been driving like a little old lady. Well, m- most of the time, but not all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, trying to get good gas miles. I got twenty four miles to the gallon on my road trip. Wow. Oh and my. that's not bad for a you know, four hundred and thirty horsepower V eight. Yeah, so, that's not bad yeah, actually. I think that's more yeah. than I like it. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, I've been paying five and a half for diesel right now, and it's, it's oh killing God. me. Yeah, uh, there's uh, I ran, I ran, I was talking to a trucker, and he said he was up in the Sierras. Uh, he, he wasn't in a resort area, but he was, but he was, uh, went in to get some f- some fuel, and he decided he might he would just assume run out of run out of diesel fuel and pay eleven dollars a gallon. That's insane. Oh my God. And, yeah. and the and the cheapest fuel out there, the cheapest fuel to make is diesel fuel. It's almost unrefined I know. crude. I know. You got, you got some good sweet Texas crude, and you don't have to do much to it to get diesel. I know. And they're charging a premium for it. That's because they won't open it up. They won't open up the, the crude. Everybody's yeah. just sitting there. They're like, well, we don't have a job this year, I guess. Yeah. So, it's kind of crazy. It's crazy. Oh, well. Oh, well. But... That's another yeah. good movie, The Croods. The Croods is a great movie. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's a it's a, a Pixar Disney uh, animated, but it's uh, oh okay. It's pretty. It's pretty good. It's, it's, it's about good. cavemen. Yeah. 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 Heck yeah. It's an analogy Heck yeah, dude. for a lot of stuff. Yeah. No. Lynn, Jim, thanks so much for having us. Thanks so much for coming on, guys. Yeah, yeah I just uh, you know, was... had fun. Hey. And and you, you, I I think I did my my first. Uh, broadcast with you guys the very my very first one. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, being yeah. over here with y'all yeah yeah, yeah. so um That's so awesome. I'm, I'm delighted to see i was delighted to see y'all at uh, in vegas and we missed you lynn it was it was a lot of fun but we understand <laughs> and i'm a cheap bastard so i stayed at nellis when it was cost me about half as much <laughs> and uh and i didn't have to worry about eating some bad food to I mean, <laughs> you were okay. there. You just, I, I don't know what, uh, yeah. I don't yeah know how but I'm I, lucky. I don't drink and I don't drink and I don't, I don't smoke. Well, I don't smoke cigarettes, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you were talking Sorry. about mushrooms earlier. I've had some experience with those too. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, a, that's the adventure we should do this summer. We should, we should yeah. take mushrooms. Oh my and God. Eat barbecue. <laughs> that would be fun. Kosher yeah. mushrooms. Co- yes. <laughs> yes. Kosher mushrooms. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. So I, I'm 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 just I'm tickled you guys were on. You guys look good. I'm glad you're I'm glad you you recovered, Ben. Mm. Yeah. We did it. We did yeah. it with the power of friendship. 
Yeah, or <laughs> some other line of bullshit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's always and, an underline of bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but we lo- we love you guys, and I I just again I I'm ha- I'm having a a wonderful time. I look forward to Mondays. I look I look forward. I you know I listen to Dave Scott. I don't always uh, chime in, but I do. Uh, every once in a while, I try to catch you guys. Uh, yeah, I have I have a couple of ex-wives would argue with this, Cindy. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, one one of them was the Antichrist, and uh, she's punishment for something evil I did in a past life. You know, maybe kill off a billion people. I don't know. I was, trying to, I was, I was probably in a different life, you know, pretending I was Bill Gates. Uh, I wanted, so. Uh, but I do, I do enjoy myself. I don't take my, I don't take myself very seriously, and I am delighted to be on here with Lynn. It's this has been fun. I, uh, it was a great suggestion back here well, a month and a half, two months ago. I've had a good time, and again, I just, I, I look forward to it. And I don't know what, and and I have no idea at, at you know, at exactly five p.m. on a Monday, what we're going to talk about. I don't know, but we'll That's figure so something fun. out. Yeah. And, and I'm sure we can fill a couple hours with chatter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Always. Always. Yeah. And 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 again, I I enjoy I enjoy the company. I enjoy Lynn and I enjoy you two guys. And and you're the you're the reason I'm still here. You're the reason I enjoy it so much. And I Aww. and I thank and I thank you and I thank everybody out there that has been very kind to me. And has accepted me into your community. It's fun. Um, it's you know, if you had asked me a couple of years ago if you know if I thought I would be where I'm at today uh, in this community, I would have said, "I don't know what you're talking about." <laughs> uh, dude, we, we uh, there, there's nothing uh, as awesome as the Jim Goodall story, dude. We we've just uh, really enjoyed. Just getting to know you, man, over the last few years. Well, I, awesome. I've been I've been around for a long time. I am blessed with a really good memory, uh, and I've been blessed with you know the people who have come in and out of my life. And I'm, uh, and with that, I'm I'm forever grateful. I have, um, yeah, I didn't you know, I didn't I didn't start out in the, in this world uh, on the right foot. You know, I had to join the service on my seventeenth birthday. You had to go to jail till I was eighteen as an incorrigible youth. Yeah, of course, you, I, I know you find that hard to believe, but uh, <laughs> absolutely, um, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and then again, it, it's just you know the luck of the draw. The people who have come into my life that have that have made my life as fun as it and it as it is. And it's mm-hmm. just it it just keeps getting better. Now we have to do is we we have to. You know, we have to dig some stuff out of the federal government to find out what's real, what's not. We have to uh, keep looking up to the sky. There's there's so many people that wander around. When I worked, when I lived in Waikiki, you go down Kalakaua, that's the main drag of Waikiki. Everybody, and I'm talking 99.9% of them, they're looking at their damn cell phone. They might as well be in Newark or Detroit. Or God forbid, <laughs> downtown Taylor, Texas. I don't know. Uh, I just, uh, but they have no idea, and they're and they're one of the most beautiful places on the planet. I mean, the Pacific Ocean and the beaches in Hawaii are beautiful, and they're walking down the beach and looking at some some stupid ass cell phone. Why? <laughs> Put the damn thing away. Open your eyes and look around. Holy oh. shit, it's beautiful here. You know. Yes. Uh, and look at the photos of like ham sandwiches, or, or <laughs> photos like, of the area that they're in right now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or, or like gorgeous. Or well, like what, it, at what age did ducklings become ducks? You know, like yeah, they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like information, yeah. You, you know. White uh, Honolulu uh, was talked about. And this is one of, before I before I retired. They were going to put in the sidewalks on the street corners. Walk, don't walk. On the ground because everybody's looking down on their damn cell phone. Yeah. Oh, it says don't walk. I mean, here in Tucson, they nail they nail someone once or twice a week crossing at night, not in a, <laughs> you know, not in a uh, not in a in a crosswalk. Oh, we got to wear black. That makes us cool. And uh, they, they had people run over in Hawaii too. They just they weren't paying attention. Jeez. 
And you it's never gonna wear looking. black at night when you don't have reflectors on. You know, it's terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Unless, unless of course you're a cat burglar, then it's okay. Right, right. Yeah. 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 You just wear some yeah. New Balance with some reflectors. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you guys and Lynn, I hope I hope you feel better, Lynn. Thanks. I know you weren't you weren't a hundred percent earlier today. Uh, I'm. Uh, I, I want to thank everybody that is has tuned in, and has it has joined the mer the, the the merriment we've had here uh, the, this yeah. evening. It's just fun, yeah, and I and I think I think Ben and I thank you, Joe, for for joining us and uh, having such a, a wonderful host like Lynn to more or less guide us on our on our on our travels. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's this, a been, lost. this has been absolutely <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys for having us on and uh, letting us join y'all tonight. Uh, yeah. and, and and drop me a line, and I'll be on your damn program too. There, let's go, Joe. Heck yeah, and Heck yeah, Joe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and I need a T-shirt, Ben. Yeah. Ben. Okay. That, well, that's, yeah. I'll take. I'll take yeah. that one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> you all take care. So it was wonderful. And uh, take care. You keep your little girls out of trouble. Yes. Um, I had a buddy of mine who has three daughters. And I said, okay, have you gotten the t-shirt where it says, I don't mind going back to prison? Well, you're cleaning your 357 <laughs> when she goes out on her first date. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I feel sorry for you guys. I had, uh, uh, yeah. You're you're in you're in for a real life experience, and you think aliens are bad? No, you have wait wait till you see some of the the creatures your daughters bring home on dates. <laughs> <laughs> I know oh they're little God. right now, but they're but you'll learn you'll learn you'll learn to uh, uh, you'll learn to know what's right and what what you have to do to you know to to make sure that they stay in the in the straight and narrow, not the daughters, <laughs> the dates. The dates, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, ho luckily, we have uh, a few more years before that happens. But it'll, yeah, yes. yeah. we'll be it thinking happens. plenty of time for us to come up with awesome ideas and, and funny scenarios. So okay, but, you uh, take care. All right, guys. Adios. Peace. See you all later. Bye. Have a Thank good you. night. Yeah. And uh, it was fun. Lynn, I had it. I had a ball. You too. You take care. Thanks. You too. Bye.